So that's why you've been leading me on, Peggy. I wanted your friendship, Roger. I knew that you could do something for my husband. He is a genius who's never had a chance. I wanted to get him that chance. There. You know it all. And for that, you offer me your friendship? That's rather a good one for me. No one but you and I need ever know. You're not backing down now. Hasn't... Hasn't friendship any other meaning for a man? Yes. Sometimes. But not with a charming woman like you. Please. Please. I love my husband. Yes, and I... I love you. Madly. You must get out of here. No. The scream came from here. Get out! Get out! Boyd Milburn, you have been justly tried and found guilty of manslaughter. Have you anything to say before sentence is pronounced upon you? Nothing. It is the judgment of this court that you be imprisoned in the state prison for the rest of your natural life. Queer bird, that Melbourne. They all are, when they come here for board and lodging. Hadn't said one word to me since we left the city. Hadn't said a word since they nailed him with the dead man. No story, no defense, no nothing. Protecting someone, eh? Maybe. There were rumors about a woman, but she never spoke up. And he didn't. And the dead man couldn't. I guess they were the only three who knew. Well, I can imagine a dead man keeping a secret, but a woman? Shorty, them rock piles is sure raising the devil with my nails. What are you wasting all your time with them drawings for? I oh, should take it easy. Working keeps a fellow from thinking too much, Biffa. Yeah? Well, I've done my thinking already. When I get out of here, there's one guy that's going to find out what it's all about. <laughs> Nothing like coming home after a hard day's work. 
and going to sleep in a nice soft bed. Nice feather pillow. <coughs> These beautiful downy covers. Money's shrunk a bit, hasn't it, Warden? <laughs> That's the new money. It's just half the size, and you will find that it'll just buy half as much. We all like you here, but I hope you never come back. Thanks, I won't. Fifteen years of one cook is enough to cure anybody. Goodbye, Warden. The tradesman's entrance is at the rear. They told me you would not be free until next week. I didn't expect you to meet me at the prison gate. Well, as your wife, I, I ought to have been there. Fifteen years. You might have forgotten that I was your husband. You haven't even offered to shake hands. There's a touch of comedy in it, isn't there? 
I wonder what your friends would say if you introduced me in my real name, the man who was sentenced for murder. Oh, don't. Don't. All right. We'll keep the secret between ourselves. You've been wonderfully successful, haven't you? All that I have has been to the medium of your brains, your genius, your inventions, sent to me from, from... Prison and patented in your name. You've changed your name, didn't you? Well, you're far away from the old surroundings here. No one even suspects, do they? Mother, Judge Thompson is here. He's asking for you. Oh, forgive my bursting in like this. This gentleman is a very old friend of mine, Mr. Mr. Boyd. My daughter, Dorothy. Are you a very old friend of Mother? A very old friend. I knew your father. Dorothy, darling, will you please go to the guests? I'll try and have Mr. Boyd stay with us for a time. Oh, I hope you'll stay. I want to ask you all sorts of questions about my father. He loved you very dearly. Go. <laughs> My daughter is very beautiful. I've been thinking of her all this time as a little child. Now she's a fine, beautiful lady. Oh, it's when I think of her that I realize how great our task is going to be. What? What are you going to do? Do? I don't know yet. After all, it was for her sake that I went away, not for you. Boy, boy, if you'll only believe what happened that night. Not now. Your friends are waiting for you. Dorothy spoke of Judge Thompson. He's the one who sentenced me. He knows. Yes. He's the only one who does. He's been a true friend. We'll have plenty to discuss. Can you put me up for a night, or shall I clear up? Why, of course you must remain. I'll have Dean show you to your room. the garden of beautiful women, you are the fairest flower of all. In Paris, Berlin, London, the capitals of the world will bow to your charms, your... He did? What? <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. Please excuse me. Oh, yes, of course, certainly. <clears throat> As I was saying, in Paris, Berlin, London, the capitals of the world will bow to your charms, your beauty, your daintiness. Anything else you would require, sir? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, leave the door open, please. I like the music. Now, dear, how empty 
of my life. I adore you, worship you. Life without you would be a vast darkness. I need you to light my path of happiness, to inspire me. I want you to be my wife. My darling, my sweetheart. I can't say that. All that I can say is... Well, say it, Paul, so I can say yes. Oh, if I had any idea it was going to be like this, I'd have said yes long ago. <laughs>
You wanted to see me, Peggy, before I went out? Yes. This foolish engagement must be ended immediately. Why? I love Paul. Love. The silly dream of foolish young girls. What do you think love will bring you? It will bring happiness. That's all I want. But you know that I have other plans for you. Plans? You should see the ones Paul has drawn up. The sweetest little breakfast nook and the darlingest nursery. Nonsense. You will do as I want. You will forget this ridiculous affair. And marry a title? Make a social conquest to please your vanity? <laughs> no. Times have changed. Girls choose their own husbands nowadays. I tell you, you'll do as I want. And if I refuse? I'll wreck Paul Wallace. I'll ruin his future. I was sorry for him. And I let him have the use of my patents to start him in business. I'll withdraw my patents. I'll make a failure of him, a laughing stock. Do that, Mother, and I'll stick by him just the same. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Boyd. Mother and I were just having a little discussion. You're such an old friend of Mother's. Tell her what you'd do if you had a daughter who was very much in love. But above everything else, I would want her to be happy. There. You see, Mother? Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Boyd. You've changed. You've become cold and vain and mercenary. In the old days... I've forgotten the old days. Have you? I might recall them if you try to interfere with her happiness. I don't believe you will sacrifice your success in society by forcing me to speak. <laughs> I must get more in tune with these surroundings. My clothes are decidedly shabby. I've become quite a dashing figure in the last few weeks. Um, Judge Thompson is downstairs. I thought perhaps you wouldn't care to meet him. Nothing could keep me from meeting Judge Thompson again, under these conditions. Oh, you delight in torturing me. Come, we mustn't keep the judge waiting. Mr. Boyd, this is Paul, the man I'm going to marry. I'm glad to meet you. How do you do, sir? I see you've made someone very happy, and I'm glad, very glad for you both. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. Mr. Boyd, Judge Thompson. Judge Thompson, it's been many years since I've had the honor of meeting so distinguished a jurist. Well, I... I hardly know what to say to that, Mr. Boyd. I'd like to have a talk with you, Boyd. Alone.
In the library? You'll excuse us a moment, Mrs. Bainbridge? Why, surely. any thought to what your returning means to your your family? Yes. Your wife and daughter have found happiness and contentment in a new life that uh, that uh, that I have no place in. Is that what you're trying to say? That I ought to clear out and leave them? I suppose that's what it amounts to. You know there is nothing you can do for them except to destroy all that they have built up to take them back to a life they have forgotten. Judge Thompson, I don't know yet what I'm going to do except that for the present, I'll remain right here. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly don't belong out here. Oh, don't, don't run away. Please. You know, Paul, Mr. Boyd knew my father very well. He must have been a wonderful man. I wish that I could have known him. I sometimes try to picture him. Mother said he went away soon after the war started. Then word came of an air raid and... Well, I guess there are lots of heroes the world never heard of. Yes. That's how I try to remember him. The, the, that's a wonderful memory to have of your father. Yes, and it's one that I'll always keep. <laughs> Here I am, a silly old man, keeping you youngsters from enjoying this wonderful moonlight. I'm going in. And I'll keep anyone else from coming out here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Will you please tell Mrs. Bainbridge that I wish to see her? Yes, sir. I've decided I'm going away, not because of anything you've said, nor of any kind suggestion of Judge Thompson. I'll find a place, and I'll let you know. Goodbye. Shorty. Hello, Bill. They told me I'd find you here. What's the racket? You coming out of a swell joint like this. Why, they're just friends of mine, Bill, that's all. <laughs> that's rich. You with swell friends like this? Say, you wouldn't hold out on a pal, would you? Come across, Shorty, now. Come across. 
I'm going to tell you this. Are you getting it together? And how will your mother's decision affect you two? It will ruin Paul's chances for his whole future if she takes her patent rights away from him. Oh, I don't care anything about that. But she threatens to disinherit Dot if she marries me. So, I've either got to let her marry a title or... Now, Paul, you know I don't mind being poor. Oh, honey, it That's isn't that... That's settled. It's you I'm worrying about. Now, come, children, don't quarrel about it. Let me attend to it. I'll have a talk with your mother, and I'm sure she'll listen to me. Oh, that'll be wonderful. That's fine, Mr. Boyd. Hello, Shorty. Got company. Don't let me butt in. Why, Bill, uh, you see, uh, we... Uh, I'll be alone a little later. That's all right. Biff or Bill's the name, miss. Pleased to meet you. Ouch. Oh, fine. Howdy, kid. Howdy, do, sir. Bill sure got himself a nice swell hangout, ain't it? Now, don't worry about it. I'll see your mother right away. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. Goodbye, Mr. Boyd. Thanks very much. Goodbye, Mr. Biffer Bill. Well, let me chase you away, folks. Bye. Good night, children. Come again. You don't trot out any of this swell junk when I call, Shorty. What am I? An orphan? Excuse me, Bill. I'm on a telephone. Bayside, 3580. Peggy? This is Boyd. I must see you tonight. Yes, it is. Very important. Ask her to bring a friend. I'm making a blonde. All right. I'll be there at 8. Goodbye. <coughs> Everything you've done has proven you to be heartless. We've made a miserable failure of our lives, but hers has just begun. You've got to stand aside for her happiness, or I'll tell her everything. You don't dare. Don't dare? You're not going to make me fail her now. Now, as before. My one concern is her happiness. If you force me, I'll tell her the whole truth. You can't. I told you everything that happened that night. You can't tell her. I will tell her everything and let her decide. All right. I'll do as you ask. Call Dorothy in and tell her. You rang, madame? Ask Miss Dorothy to come here at once. just had a nice, quiet chat with your mother, and she wants to tell you that everything is perfect about you and Paul and his patents and everything. Oh, Mother, you darling. Bring Paul in. He'll be glad to hear it. Why, Paul went to see Judge Thompson. He told me the judge had called up and wanted to see him at once. I can't imagine why. I think it would be a good plan if I were there during their meeting. Don't you think so, Mrs. Bainbridge? 
I'll bring Paul back with me. And so I felt it to be my duty to tell you the truth about Dorothy's father in order to save you from marrying into the family of a murderer. Do you really think that would make any difference? Then perhaps this will. If you continue your attentions to Dorothy, she will be told. You wouldn't do a thing like that. I have told you what will happen. And that's final. Why, you're meddling <coughs> on. <coughs> you rang, sir? It's all right, John. You may go. I have warned you. Keep your mouth shut. Officer. There he is. He did it. Now, wait a minute. I had nothing to do with that officer. Why, I was in there talking to the judge. I didn't know anything about it. Well, you better come down and tell the oh, But I tell you, I don't know. Come along, come along. Well, why don't you listen to me just a minute? I didn't have anything to do with it. I was just going out the hall. I tell you, he... you in on a job down on the island. Okay for tonight. Now you're talking, shorty. I'm about ready to go, Bill. Say, I have no gas. You got an extra one? I'll get you a machine gun if you want it, shorty. Here you are. Thanks. Stick them up. Shorty. You got an innocent man for the murder you committed tonight. And we are going to clear him. Wait a minute, Shorty. What's the idea of sticking me up this way? He sent you up, didn't he? He ought to be glad he got his. Stay where you are.
What did you do it for? I tell you, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. The servant said he heard you threaten Judge Thompson. You can't deny that. Yes. I want him to keep quiet about something. And when he wouldn't, you shut him up for good, huh? Why were you in Judge Thompson's house? He sent for me. What for? Come on. Why were you there? Every time we get him to this spot, he shuts up. <laughs> Frankly, our case is very weak. His absolute refusal to explain, even to me, his counsel, why he was at Judge Thompson's home that night, makes his defense an almost hopeless task. By any chance, Mrs. Bainbridge, do you know his reason for this attitude? If you would explain, you might save his life. I cannot. To tell what passed between them would seal Paul's fate beyond all hope. It might even appear as a motive for the crime. will save him. You must save him. Nothing we can do will be left undone, Mrs. Bainbridge. Thank you. Good day. Good day. It is you who are paying for Paul's defense. And, and I've been filled with so many bitter thoughts. Oh, mother dear. There's so much to make amends for, dear. I've been blind, and now I'm afraid it's too late. Oh, it isn't, Mother. It isn't. We'll win yet. If only we could find some trace of Mr. Boyd. I know he would help us. Just a minute, dear. done this too? I want you to go to see him, dear. The letter came only today. Will he? It's hard to say yet. He's been in a coma since they brought him in. Only the last day or so, he has started to talk incoherently. May I sit with him a while? Bill, that house on the island, I'll need to get. Stand there, Biffa. He didn't do it. He didn't do it.
Hello, Wallace. Hello, Captain. Well, they've convicted me. But I still tell you I didn't do it. Don't let it get you, my boy. You see, we have our duty to perform, too. Why, well, you didn't even put up a defense. Yes, that's true. I brought you here because there is someone who wants to see you. See me? Really? Any news about the old man? He's charged from the hospital this morning. Came right back to the city, to his flat. Jenkins is watching. Say, Chief, I can't get this case straight. There's something big being covered up somewhere. Maybe. This case isn't closed yet, Morgan. I'm on a lead right now that... Yeah? Great girl, Morgan. Great girl. Yeah. Promise, Paul. You won't lose hope. I promise, Doc. I'm looking for Biffa Bill. Yeah. You gotta go to South America if you want to see the Biffa. <laughs> Do you believe me now? My number up in the big house was 1748. I did 15 years for that other murder. Confessing a murder doesn't always prove it, Melbourne. Proof? Judge Thompson sent me up. That's reason enough, isn't it? I hated him. Oh, I'd have shut up about it, but... I couldn't let you burn an innocent man. All right, Milburn. We'll take your confession. Sit down. But they've convicted Paul. Why have they arrested you? Why should he have done it? He had no grievance against Judge Thompson, but someone else did. Whom did he send to prison for life? Whose home was he seeking to destroy? Do you mean that you? you I know you didn't. Who else? I got away with it, too, except for the boy. He's innocent. You've given yourself up? And you didn't do it. I won't let you. Listen. When you leave here, I want you to forget me. Go on keeping the truth from Dorothy, her father. Let her go on believing that he died years ago. Because he did. Bill, why didn't you stay away till after they burnt the kid? It'll only be a few days now. 
Shorty was looking for you a couple of weeks ago. Shut up. That's over. Quit talking about it. You don't have to get so touchy about it. Anyway, I told him you went to South America. Do we pull that job tonight? We are going. Okay. <laughs> Thompson killing. What do I know about it? Smart, ain't you? Come on, keep moving. The girl's gone too. Well, call headquarters. It's around the block. And there's been no news of Miss Dorothy this morning? Nothing, madame. I'll answer it. Hello? I'll come at once. How do you do? How do you do? Have you news of my daughter? Some very important news, Mrs. Bainbridge. Won't you sit down a moment, please? There's nothing more to worry about. The police have the guilty man. I'm so happy that everything's all right. Dorothy has told me all that you've done. And I'm very grateful to you. We'll be happy now, Mother. Happier than you ever imagined. confession of yours, Milburn. I never did think very much of it. They knew you were an old fraud all the time. They've caught the one who's really guilty, and he's confessed the whole thing. She means she caught him, and he was trying to take her away. Brave girl, and you should all be very proud of her. I... I was always sure of you, my child. I'll say goodbye to the happy family. 
Goodbye. You're not going to leave me again. Since the day I went to the hospital, I've known Father. Well, why don't you laugh instead of cry? Here we are, we found each other. Be married and everything. Come on, let's smile and be happy. <laughs>